Hey, one and all. It is June 20th, 2023, and it is a little after 8 in the morning. Is it after 8? Yeah, a little after 8 in the morning. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I'm here at the airport, the corporate center next to the airport in Chester County, uh, outside of Coatesville, and there's like, I can see, I can see at least three jets uh, on deck. They're not moving anywhere, so I don't know when or where they're going. So um, the wind is out of the east. A lot of overcast. There's no, there's no a blue sky at all. So the ceiling, I'm gonna guess the ceiling is around 2,000 feet, maybe about 2,000 feet. A lot of moisture in the air, but there's no uh, rain predicted for today. Strange. Mm. Sorry, Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> Wawa again. Yeah, pretty girl certainly waits on me at Wawa. We, you know, get along very well. Probably too young for me, you know. Uh, <clears throat> it might be fun hanging out, you know, sometime. Anyway, uh, so 26 years ago, right now, it's a Friday. It's uh, June 20th, 1997, and it's a Friday, and I'm finishing my third week um, working 80 hours a week. That's 80, eight zero hours a week, minimum wage, no benefits. At 46 years old, that, that's what you'd say. That, you can make a few deductions or a few assumptions there that my career path has broken, and it did. And I am so grateful and thankful for that. Not getting the videographer job was one of the best things that ever happened to me, if not the best, but it created the, uh, uh, it was such a relief. It just felt when I, when I didn't get the job, the videographer job, it was at the end of the day, uh, of, a, of a day of work at Saturn, and it was three o'clock in the afternoon, and I had to call to find out, and at this point, I, I was assuming the worst, but you never know until you get the absolute answer that you didn't get it. And this would be like the third or fourth time that I called them after the interview. Three o'clock in the afternoon on May 29th, 1997, I called them and they said, no, we like you, we like your work, but we gave the job to somebody else and that's the end of it. So goodbye and good luck and that was it. And with, it was a part-time job, $15 an hour is good money back then. Um, it was my doorway to the legal profession and there's lots of money there. But I don't know for a videographer if there'd be lots of money. I don't know. You got a business going and you're reliable and you develop a good reputation. It takes time, you know. I certainly wouldn't have made the money that I made over the next 13 years, over the next two or three years, if I'd gotten that videographer job. I would not have made near the money that I got uh, earning for uh, working for Bell Atlantic. But the way I got into Bell is just so bizarrely serendipitous and impossible that it had to be God setting this up for me. Had to be. There's too many coincidental trip wires. Oh, my dog. What's the matter? Harvey, what's the matter? Uh, something with the dog. What's the matter, pup? Hmm? You just did a poo-poo and a pee-pee. What's the problem? We're going to go out in just a minute, okay? Huh. Anyway, uh, so so I don't get that job. And, and I didn't have, this was not part of the whole plan. But when I didn't get that job, suddenly everything became crystal clear to me that I cannot continue to be a photographer slash videographer. There's just no way. And I love it, my friend, you know, when I bumped into him, uh, not too long ago, like maybe five years ago or something like that, Frank Gallo, because he was a photographer too. And he also worked at UPS to get medical benefits for his family at three o'clock in the frickin' morning. <laughs> oh, three o'clock to eight o'clock every morning during the week. And I remember what he, so I bumped into him maybe five years ago. I hadn't seen him in a long time. Very very dear friend for me anyway he, I'm not a dear friend of his but he's a dear friend of mine and I talked to him on the phone I was talking to him on the phone 
And he'd been a photographer forever, you know, like his entire career. And now he's, he's got his own landscaping business and he's making a ton of money from what I hear. He's doing very well. And when I talk to him, uh, and I know that he's had some success with the landscaping, I said, well, looking back on it, Frank, if you had to do it over again, would you be a photographer? And he says, fuck no. <laughs> he says, I lost my, being a photographer cost me my marriage. And that, that really hurt him, I know. It hurt me too. Oh God, man. I'm not saying photography cost me. That's not the same as my story. He, he was, he made every effort though. That in a way our stories are parallel because I made every effort to make it as a photographer and so did he. Don't go into that for a career. It's, don't, it's okay for being on the side on a passionate hobby or a passionate, you know, side hustle of some kind. But not your full-time hustle. No, I mean, you know, to to do that as a photographer and make it big, you know, you can. <laughs> I had a couple of opportunities. I had one opportunity after I got the job at Bell that I still can't believe for aerial photography. But my point is, when you're running your own business, man, the pressures and the stress and the weight of you know your obligations and your responsibilities can just crush you it can it can be a crushing crushing burden and on may 29th of 97 when i found out i did not get the videographer part-time videographer jobs it it just it, it god or whoever you want to call it injected three thoughts into my brain when it happened you know uh, i was in my car and before i drove away from saturn i looked through the windshield and the sky was similar to this not quite the same but there was, it was completely overcast, soft, any leave of its sky. And three thoughts just injected themselves in, into my head. Number one, I'm going to be poor the rest of my life. It's a mandate from God. God made that decision. Regardless of how much I try and how, how much effort I put into something, I'm just going to be poor. That's number one. Number two, well, not, uh, going back to being poor, you know, my grandfather, who everybody idolized. Oh, the professional baseball player. Oh, he won the World Series with the Pirates in 1909. Oh, we love Pop. We love Pop. He's buried in an unmarked grave. Now, how much does was he loved? You know, buried in an unmarked grave. How much was he loved? <laughs> not, not enough to pay for a marker on his grave. This guy won the World Series with the Pirates in 1909. Full-time player, man. <laughs> unmarked grave. There was something going on there between Dad and my Uncle Bernie, Dad's brother. I don't know what, but between the two of them, they couldn't they couldn't pony up for a, mark, a marker. Oh well. Um, but you know, I just thought, okay, I'm gonna be end up being buried in a pauper's grave. But I don't give a shit where I'm buried after I'm dead. That's my my corpse is somebody else's problem. I'm gone, so I, that didn't bother me. So that's the first thought. I'm gonna be poor the rest of my life. The second thought was. I'm not going to give up on my, my children. I'm going to be there. I'm going to work my ass off for them and make sure I pay that child support, man. And, and that's important. That's important. They don't realize it. The mother kind of expects it. It's not like she's grateful or anything. <laughs> she wanted me to pay child support for the rest of her life. <laughs> and that way it would be spousal, ex-spousal support. And that she said that she was going to go for uh, alimony. But, uh, you know, during the during 1993, when when she was riding so high and she got divorce papers drawn up and everything. And, and I said, you can do that, but it's going to cost you a ton of money because I'm going to fight you every inch of the way. I didn't make any much, much more money than you did after taxes. After write off. But, but anyway, I mean, she she never made <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, I'm not giving up on my children. I'm not going to abandon them. I don't care if I have to, you know, live somewhere else. It doesn't matter. I'm going to be there and be there for them as long as God makes me physically, allows me to be physically able and capable of doing that. And, and I felt good about that. And then the third thought, I'm not a photographer anymore. I'm done. I'm finished with photography and videography. I, I can't do this anymore. I'm not going to do this anymore going to the mailbox every day hoping there's a contract and a check so I can pay my bills. Oh, it's horrible. And then you get, and then you get, 
you get stuck in a job like at UPS. And at the end of three years at UPS, I looked at myself and I said, I haven't made any progress. My career has gone nowhere. My business is floundering, it's cratering. I gotta have that videographer job. And I didn't get it, and then it just hit me. I'm not, I'm not doing that anymore. It's, it's over, I'm done, I'm finished. I don't know if I had any bookings left for that year. I'm not sure. I don't think I did. It's possible that I did. I don't, I don't think so, though. But I wasn't looking for weddings or anything, any kind of photography anymore. I'm, and I, I, I decided I'm going to work full-time at IMM, minimum wage, no benefits. I'm going to work full-time driving the courtesy shuttle to Saturn, minimum wage, no benefits. I'm going to do that for two months just to reach some peace of mind and serenity in my life. And then I'm going to go to Chubb Institute and learn about computer programming. Now, I could have done very well there uh, with what they teach. I mean, I tell you if, you, want, if you want job security, then and now learn how to, to program or code, do computer coding. I mean, it's, you're in high demand, very high. Anyway, so it's 26 years ago right now. I'm in my third week working 80 hours a week, minimum wage, no benefits. And... I'm loving it. I, I'm having a peace of mind that I hadn't experienced. I, I don't remember the last time I had peace of mind like that, you know? Suddenly, I was making enough money to pay off all my obligations. Yeah, it's a long day, but I have it every weekend off. <laughs> From wedding photography to having every weekend off? Oh, that's great. It's great. Man. It is so wonderful, and um, so so I don't get the job. And I'm I'm with Steve Tudor every night doing data ent entry till two thirty in the morning at IMM, and then suddenly on uh, June thirtieth he disappears. June, okay, so this is June twenty. So in ten days he's going to disappear, and I was getting into a groove working with him because he's so easy to get along with. I needed that kind of person to work with, somebody that really simple and easy, and it's not going to be a pain in my ass, you know. And there, everywhere I went, there were people that pain just went out of their way to be a pain in my ass. I, I don't know. I should have reacted better. I just I, I don't get into uh, conflict that that easily, you know, or not easily, but. I don't know. Anyway, it was great working with Steve. And then suddenly he's gone, disappeared, didn't tell me where he was going, didn't say goodbye. And I knew he got something good. Yeah, he got something good at Bell Atlantic. And he came back 10 days later. I th he was gone. He was out of my life. I wasn't thinking about him anymore. He shows up at IMM on uh, July 7th at, on my, you know, my nighttime shift. And he tells me he's, he went back to IMM for three days before he's going to start his new job on Thursday at Bell Atlantic. And I, I said, give me a name and a phone number I can call. And he did, and I called, and I, I was hired over the phone three days later at a 60% raise, full benefits for me and my, my children. Um, a 60% raise, full benefits, and six weeks of paid training <laughs> where they're paying me to come and sit in a class that they're going to be teaching about the internet, uh, about the internet, high-speed data transport, high-speed data transport protocol, uh, high-speed internet access protocol. Uh, 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 I'm working minimum wage, doing mindless work, and now suddenly this Fortune 100 company is hiring me to talk to their customers about all this new stuff. I'm just like, what? <laughs> so professionally, I was on the cusp of the 13 best money-making years of my life, although I had an aerial photography opportunity two years later that surpassed what I was making at Bell. I still can't believe it. Lathrop Construction in Akron, Ohio. Oh. Anyway, I said no because benefits were non-existent. I was going to be a 1099 contractor, but the money was was unbelievable. Phenomenal money, I God. <laughs> This one of the biggest construction companies in the country wanted to hire me to do aerial photography on all of their projects every month all over the country. This is after being, I just got hired into Bell Atlantic, the company, in 19, 19, late 1998. And then here comes, God was trying to redirect me, I, I believe. I believe that because I think God knew that my, uh, my understanding or arrangement with... Uh, uh, a woman that I met at Bell was going to go horribly off the rails, and it did. So my social life was 
unfortunately. I mean, a lot of people had a good social life there, but not me. And it really crashed and burned my social life. My professional life, unbelievable. To this day, I can't believe it. It's just, it's out of a story or a fairy tale or something, you know? God really had something to do with that. It's one of several miracles in my life. The cottage, the career at Bell, Stacy Spiker, and Laura Slap Shelton are, are like four, oh, oh yeah, they're like four miracles that happened for me. And Laura, unfortunately, uh, she got away from me. And uh, it was too soon after my divorce, I just couldn't marry her. Stacy was like, my life began when I met Stacy Spiker. That's the way I look at, at that relationship with her. And uh, the cottage was, I was literally two days away from being homeless and I got, I got this, um, <laughs> I got a house. I got a house for $600 a month in the middle of Exton, Pennsylvania. You can't, you can't buy a hole in the ground. You can't rent a, a hole in the ground for $600 a month in Exton. I got a whole house with front yard, back yard, and two side yards, and a, and a storage shed where I could easily store everything I owned for $600 a month. Get the F out of here. That's impossible. It's a miracle. It was a miracle. <laughs> Incredible. Hmm. Anyway, peace, y'all. I know this is going to eat up all the memory that I have left in my, my phone and my the cloud somewhere. Those clouds up there. But um, I guess what you should take away from this is don't give up. Uh, just don't give up. And if you, you know, these crazy dreams you have of being an astronaut or something like that, they're unattainable. Well, be happy with taking care of yourself and having to take, you know, so you don't have to depend on anybody. Being independent, my friends, it is everything. For me, people that want to be dependent on somebody else, like my youngest brother, oh, God, he passed away a year and a half ago, sadly, but he was living like an animal. He, he kept on thinking somebody was going to come and take him away and take care of him, where he doesn't even try to do that. Be independent. Independence should be everybody's goal, in my opinion, okay, because it's so gratifying, and it's really good for your self-esteem, you know. Peace, y'all. And peace to my son, Wesley. I, um, I'm going to be there for him. Peace.